Sorry. You're fine. No All right. Worries. Going live. All right. It is warning me that it's not receiving enough info for smooth streaming, so there may be buffering. Before and it's also lives, warning me that. What your speed was. I never remember to check my speed. You're live. All right. Mm. I'm also going to start recording onto, well, unless it crashes. Okay. I'm also recording this onto the computer. So if the stream drops, let's just continue and uh, we can just put the full video up after. Yep. And it is live. Yup. And I'm going to edit the time on it because uh, YouTube seems to think it's not 7 p.m. Yeah. Oh, okay. it won't let me. Never mind. Okay. Well, it is live now. Yay. So. All right. I'll go ahead and uh, quickly promote it again, especially since uh, YouTube thinks we're an hour off. I noticed on the stream, I don't know if Joseph is able to make the adjustment, but um, my audio sounds a little bit quiet, but it might be me. Um, hey, Joseph, can you go into another room and check the audio on, because Sam's concerned that her audio is low. And I have a headpiece in, so I don't, Let's I can't tell. Sam's waveform if you open OBS. Sure. So I, you should... Click the thing to get rid of the side columns. I, I kind of can't remember. It will always have this. Click it again. Oh, great. That just. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Um. If you are watching, I apologize that we're kind of finagling around. I'm just trying something new and that always takes a little bit of uh, finessing. Okay, so then we need to check. Yeah, if Sam talks. Sam, would listen. you mind talking? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm it here. It looks like she's so. hitting negative 30. You can bring it up. For yeah, sure. and I'm not going to have any music this stream. That way it's you not competing. You might bring it all the way yeah. up, basically, because uh, where is your... Okay, Mine's your down here. Yeah. So, yeah, if Sam could talk a little yeah. bit more. Yeah, uh, I can Sam try talking. Is, I, I, I've got Hal. Maybe a little higher than you. I've got Hal uh, over <laughs> on the chair snoozing. And who is Hal? He, he is my kitten. He is about 12 weeks old. No, 16 weeks now. Wow, he's and he's a monster. So big. Oh, just like yeah, the real so, thing. I know. Well, today he was being a drama queen because we put a collar on him. Oh, poor baby. Poor baby. Yeah. Life is hard. Oh, yeah. Well, like, he actually was moping for a good while, and I was just like, why? Why? Why are you like this? What a um, baby. It, there's scratches all over my arms, and that's from him, because kitten, monster, yeah. he's very bitey sometimes. Yeah. I remember those days when a cat thinks yeah. they need to teeth on you. Oh, yes. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. I am. All right, I think we are ready. So, um, All right. setup's a little bit different today since we have a guest and we're trying something a little bit different as well. We're using Discord to capture video on Kabocha's in, and then we're using uh, OBS to stream it. So, uh, running two sets of video is a little hinky for my <laughs> computer. So, uh, we're also recording it. So, if the stream drops or if we have hiccups or bumps along the way, there's going to be a clean version uploaded afterwards. So, uh, Kabocha, do you want to introduce yourself or should I introduce you? Um, I, I suppose I can introduce myself. Um, I'm Kabocha. I dabble in a lot of art related stuff as well as technology. Um, you might know me from all sorts of Photoshop brushes. <laughs> um, and I also create a webcomic called Linked. This summer, um, because I've been spending a lot of time at home, I've been learning how to make paint and different kinds of blocks of paper and all that sort of stuff. So it's been a very watercolory summer for me. 
And, and now tonight, it's fall. We're, yeah, and now it's fall. Tonight we're going to be talking about some of those adventures. Oh, yes. In watercolor. I've got the assortment, for the most part, spread out. <laughs> I am missing the earliest attempts, but oh. I, think, I think this is a good representation of this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the earliest attempts, I would not call them any sort of good. Um, because my earliest attempts, I tried using stone, and I had no idea what I was doing aside from just putting crushed up rocks together with gum arabic. It was a learning experience. It did not go very well. But see, you're you're um, here today to talk about about everything you learned, the journey. Oh yes, oh yes. So, do you oh. want to start by just giving kind of a rough overview of your current watercolor manufacturing process? Or do you want to like go through the sedimentary layers of watercolor learning <laughs> and you can explain as we go, which would be better for you? Um, probably where I am at the moment. Um, okay. Right now, I am kind of very fixated on what are known as chameleon colors, which when it comes to makeup and pigments and like that and such are colors that when you swatch them shift color um, depending on the angle of the light. Um, so this is like one of the little pans that I've made, but I've gotten, I've got an entire thing of pigment, which Wait. I don't know if you meant. Um, hmm? sorry. Hang on a second. Yeah. I gotta pull it up. Okay. So I, there we go. All right. Uh, OBS yeah. wasn't refreshing the feed. So when you were like, here's the pan I made, I was like, I'm not seeing anything. All right. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I've got little pan right here this is you know the final product but this is what i start with is just a bunch of powdered pigment that in this case i got it off of etsy this particular color um after doing a lot of research in makeup because i actually really really like sparkly nail polish so this kind of seemed like the next step because i wanted to see if i could take nail polish pigments and make them into paint yeah and while there are sparkly watercolors, um, I don't know where my hydrocolors have run off to, but I do have my fine tech for lessons. While there are sparkly and duochrome, which is another word for uh, chameleon colors to my knowledge, while there are duochrome and sparkly watercolors on the market, they kind of can be kind of limited with effects. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really get like chunk glitter, for example, or, um, like granulating like um lunar black would be like lunar black plus a glitter shift yeah yeah actually um let's see i've got it's not in this pan it's on the other side of the room which i don't feel like getting right now <laughs> but fine. i have tested a few um so i have a couple of of paints that you know they look white in the pan and when yeah. you put them on a light colored paper, they basically turn out semi-transparent. Mm -hmm. um, so when you mix it with black, it, it ends up with a really nice kind of shifting sort of color. Um, I don't know how else to describe it without a demonstration. Yeah, well, that's um, what we're going to do tonight. Yeah, because um, so you, have, you have paints and I have the pigment. <laughs> but I do have all sorts of swatches, so. So um, um, what is your current process for making handmade watercolors? So at the moment, I basically mix a medium like gum arabic. In this case, I'm using primarily the Windsor Newton gum arabic, um, which is pretty easily available at a lot of craft stores. And online, um, yeah, easy to get a hold of. Yeah, and that was one of my primary factors in choosing that. Um, I'm pretty much mixing that and whatever pigment that I've got um, and just mixing them together so that way you get something that will eventually dry and become this nice little pan of paint. Yeah, and that looks really professional too. Like I've been buying a lot of handmade watercolor and talking about them here on the channel and that looks as good as anybody else's that's for sale. <laughs> yeah, um, the thing I like about the the Windsor and Newton gum Arabic is that, you know, it it dries kind of hard without getting cracking yeah. or without cracking a whole lot. Yeah. Um, and you can actually reactivate it fairly well. Which is really um, important. Some some brands yes. don't do that so well. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it because I know you don't want to. We both own some of the Jasper Stardust watercolors. I reviewed them here on this channel. And they're handmade watercolors sold on Etsy and people tend to love them, right? But we both had kind of the same problem. I thought they were very chalky. Um, I didn't say that there were additives in them, but you surmised that that might be due to a lack of gum arabic. Um, either a lack of gum arabic or something that has a humectant in it, mm -hmm. uh, the more that I know nowadays. Um, it, so in that case, it just, it needs something else added to it because basically it's, it's just almost like powder in a pan that's become caked together, which can be really nice, but it's kind of a pain in the butt when you're trying to lay down a wash of, you know, genuine lapis or smalt, and it just kind of rubs off when it dries. Yeah, and that would be a, a lack of binder problem, right? When it just like smushes off? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, that has been the case in my experience. So with the Jasper pans, you ended up adding gum arabic, right? Yes, I did. Um, and that actually got the uh, smalt behaving much better. Yeah. And in my in my opinion and I was actually able to use it like a paint and you know I could touch the paper and it just didn't come off yeah it was yeah. great that was my problem I did grids and the the paint would just like flake off on the grids and I was like uh, maybe yeah. I'm using this wrong I don't I don't know I mean I've been using watercolor forever but maybe I'm using it wrong today yeah and and the thing is is that they're really gorgeous pigments it's yeah. just the formulation needs a little bit more work, I think. But, you know, it, I'm also not selling paint for money, so. Right, right, um, right. That's, a different, that's a different game. You're doing it for fun and enjoyment right now. Yeah, and, and I'm basically giving it away to friends who want to play with sparkles. Yep, yep, like me. And that's what we're going to, that's part of what we're going to do tonight. Okay, so yes. um, we talked about the binder, and your binder looks a whole heck of a lot better than my really gross old bottle. Yeah. I don't really use gum arabic. I keep this around just so I can show people the difference. So this would be another binding medium. This is Aquazol or Coors Aquazol. Would you recommend this as a binding medium for handmade watercolors? No, actually. Really? Okay. Um, so after having tested it over the course of the summer, um, actually, if you look in that little yellow box that you've got, um, this one, yeah, those okay. paints were bound entirely using the core watercolor medium. Oh, interesting. Um, so the problem is, is that oh, they're beautiful it though. completely, it, so those, those were my first tests and those are actually all using Pearl X. Yeah. And what is um, Pearl X? Um, it's a readily available um, set of pigments made by uh, Jacquard. They do a lot of fabric dyeing type stuff. Um, but you can pick those up at any craft store, honestly. Yeah, it's really, really easy to find. So yes, this, would you recommend Perlex for people who are just starting out making their own watercolor and they just want to see if they even like the process? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can pick up... Uh, a decent sized jar at like Jerry's for I think three or four dollars. Oh, so it's very so. affordable too. Oh yes, most certainly. And you could really mix it as an additive with like, mm -hmm. um, if you're doing like acrylic, you can mix some in there to uh, make it a little bit pearlescent. So it's not just limited yeah. to watercolor, you could use it for other things as well. Yes, and that's what my uh, brother-in-law and I have done it's worked out pretty well in that regard. So these are hmm. all Aquazol. So what's the problem with the Aquazol? There's no humectant in it, um, which means that once they've... So the Aquas are So that particular medium takes forever to... Um, I When I say forever, I mean it took three, four weeks for it to dry completely. Wow. And a, uh, yeah. Um, and then when it dried, you know, it, if you, or when you demonstrate, you'll notice when you go to pick it up, it's, you basically get a clump of powder with it from the pan. Oh, interesting. So, so no, no humectant in there. Correct. 
Um, and a humectant is basically, in this case, a substance which holds in a little bit of moisture, um, which in a lot of in a lot of cases with paints, people use honey a lot. Now that's one you can find just about anywhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's it's very convenient. Yeah, it's not this like super secret hidden ingredient. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so we talked about binder. We have talked about humectant. We talked a little bit about pigment, but we're going to talk about pigment more. Is there anything else that you need if you're making your own paints? Like, it's too bad we don't have smell-o-vision because these uh, smell so good. What makes these smell so, so good? So... If you are making your own homemade paint and you happen to go online and pick up something or, you know, read a formula for making your own watercolor binder, a lot of them suggest using gum arabic and honey, um, which you've got your binder and you've got your humectant and usually like you would boil them together and mix them in a pot, but you want to add a little bit of um, an essential oil that has an antiseptic property, um, such as clove oil. Now, um, why, why do you need to add something that's a, um, antiseptic? Uh, because eventually it's going to start molding. Oh it's... no, that's gross. Nobody wants <laughs> yeah. that. Can you, ugh, well, that's super nasty. So, fun story. When I first started making paints and when I, when I first experimented, I was actually using like rocks. This is chrysocolla right here. Hang on a second. Um, let me let me embiggen the window. Yes. There we go. I will actually, I will actually empty out my chrysocolla samples. This is actually a pretty soft rock, so you're able to uh, smush it up pretty easily, and it doesn't want to come out of the jar. Which um, we're not going to talk. We, we can talk about it now. Okay. I'm not like interrupting you. I'm just letting the stream know. Um, we're not going to talk too much about selecting like minerals from say a mineral show or going out and rock hunting and yeah. uh, mulling those yourself because that's like a whole, that's a whole thing. And that can get kind of expensive, right? Like I know that when oh, you yes. first started your watercolor ma making journey, you were going to rock shows because you enjoy rocks and minerals anyway. Mm -hmm. And that ended yeah. up being kind of expensive. Um, it was, and it was also difficult to get a hand on, uh, to reliably get my hands on minerals that I could use. But in the case of like the chrysocolla, or in this case, this is a chunk of fuchsite, which is a mica based mineral. Oh, that's um, pretty. Yeah, actually, Daniel Smith has a paint made out of this stuff. It's really nice and it's very sparkly. Um, one of the problems with it is sometimes there's contaminants in there or bacteria and such. And that means, you know, even though honey itself can keep real well, you might end up with moldy paints and that's really gross. And I don't recommend it. Yeah. Like basically anything you're handling with your hand, you're introducing contaminants. So the half pans yeah. or the pans you're using, um, the materials you're mixing on and mixing with, and the yep. pigments you're using all can become contaminated through handling. So using an antiseptic oil can help prevent that from, you know, ruining the batch of paints. Or even um, how quickly do paints mold when they do mold? Oh, it really depends. Like if you pick up a honey that's mostly, that's like less actual honey and more, sugar, say, yeah, more sugar, that's going to mold real quick. Um, God, I wish I still had the moldy paint, but I threw it out because... <laughs> yeah. yeah, you probably I, like threw it into the sun in horror, like, oh no. <laughs> I am incredibly allergic to mold, so yes, yeah. that went into the sun with a vengeance. Um, but no, uh, so yeah, you, you'll find it start to mold within a couple weeks usually. Okay. The reason so, I ask is for people at home who may have purchased homemade watercolors. I've never gotten any that have become moldy, but I know it's th th that market is getting larger and larger and there's more people on Etsy who are selling handmade watercolors. So it's not inconceivable 
that someone with good intentions but not all of the information might manufacture some watercolors that end up going moldy. So I, I wanted the viewers to understand that like what to look for and what kind of time frame. I mean, that would basically yeah. make them unusable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, the second you start getting mold growing in there, you got to be real suspect about anything else that it's been near because it could have yeah. possibly contaminated true. other you, parts of your palette. You could wreck like your whole studio almost with that. Yeah. It, I just wouldn't play with it. <laughs> um, now, I, I'm sure like some of the big manufacturers like Sennelier or Daniel Smith, they probably run it through like a UV tunnel or something like that to kind of um, kill off anything that might <laughs> grow mold. But most of us don't have access to that at home. So clove oil yeah. is a great affordable option too. Um, yes. What else could you use? Um, you could also use lavender spike oil. Oh, that smells really um, nice too. Yeah, it does. Um, but I haven't actually experimented with that because of availability. Yeah, yeah. With the with the clove oil, you can buy just a little bottle and it's fairly inexpensive. But with the lavender spike oil, it's typically used in like oil painting, right? As like an alter a yes. more natural alternative. And while it's affordable, it's a bigger bottle. So if you're just starting out, the unless you want to split a bottle with somebody, the clove oil yeah. is probably the best way to go. Yeah, and the thing is, is like, it took a while for me to find actual clove oil on Amazon, and I've got this bottle here. Um, it took a while because the essential oil market is littered with people who sell fragrance oils, yes. saying it's for diffusers, and I actually want the kind of clove oil that you could potentially use in your mouth to treat tooth problems. Okay, yeah. So it has to be, there, there cannot be any what's known as like carrier oils, like coconut oil yeah. or olive oil or uh, safflower oil. It has to be 100% pure clove oil for it to have those antiseptic properties. Yes, correct. And, you know, I, and I am talking about this from just a purely, you know, this is what I've this is what I use. This is what everybody has been recommending online sort of standpoint. I'm not coming at anybody who believes yeah. that essential oils do whatever. It's I, just honestly, I use them for migraines. Menthol really helps with my migraines for some reason. It like tricks my brain. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not saying anything in it either, but there are lots of reasons why somebody might have them around. They smell nice. It, I mean, I think this cost me less than $10 for yeah. this entire bottle. And when I, actually made my own gum arabic this um i only had to use one or two drops at a time per okay mix. um do you want to talk about like how one would because i know you're not like going out to a gum acacia tree in africa and like tapping your own gum arabic right <laughs> oh that would that would be really fun that's like um, a whole series yeah that would be an entire series but uh given the climate um, so, so what I did instead of actually, you can actually pick up gum arabic and chunks of resin, or because gum arabic is a resin mm -hmm. instead of this lovely little fluid. I it's mean, also yeah, this used is great in cooking. Like it's used. Yes, it as, is. So um, I don't know if you're you weird can... like me, but I've tasted it by accident before, and it's sweet like a syrup, and it's commonly used in in like. Um, confectionery arts right like like uh yeah. fondant and uh what's the yeah. word like carved sugar yeah it, it's it's um it, it's very good at stiffening whatever you're going to do um but the thing is is that you know it, if you pick up some gum arabic um you know it, if you get it as a powder you can mix rough it, my my particular solution is you know and this is by volume, so you get like one scoop of gum arabic, one spoonful of, you know, water, and a spoonful of honey. And you put that in a pot, kind of boil it all down, um, and then just and make sure that it's pretty much, you don't have any floaties in it Ooh, or yeah. any chunks. Yeah, you um, want to strain those out, right? Oh, do you do you strain it out when you're making watercolors using like a strainer or cheesecloth? 
So the Jacquard gum Arabic powder, I actually don't have to. Oh, nice. So it does seem very useful. finely powdered. Yeah, it is very finely powdered. Um, there wasn't any crud in it. So all I did was just mix it all together and put it in, in a container. Um, you can, it, it's usually recommended to let it stand anywhere from 12 to 24 hours before using, just so that way it can all settle. Um, but, you know, as you're boiling it, add your clove oil to it, like two or three drops, depending on how much. Add mm -hmm. whatever pigments you're deciding to use. You're making a base in advance and then bottling it for when you're ready to make the paints. Mm -hmm. And that'll keep probably forever. It's got honey in it and it's got uh, clove oil in it. Um, it, it really depends. Um, I try not to keep it for more than two or three weeks, um, but usually I go through it before that. And boy, you've been um, making a lot of watercolors. Oh, if I went and got the giant box, yeah. Um, Are you gonna go get the giant box? Oh God, it's across the room. And oh, then it's so get... far, and you have to move that. that okay, stuff. it does start getting to be like PETA territory, yeah. pain in the butt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you do get up, we do want to see your box. <laughs> um, oh, give me a second. I'll be right back. Ah, ha, ha, ha. We've convinced you to do it anyway. So while Kabocha's grabbing that, you guys can probably see my desktop. Most of this is stuff that Kabocha sent me, gosh, since March. Kabocha's been busy. So we kind of have a short timeline of the watercolor process or the watercolor improvement, right? These are some of the, I won't say the earliest one because even years ago, Kabocha was sending me watercolor that she was making, but this is earlier from this year. And then this is from, um, gosh, this was sent to me while I was in St. Charles Parish. So, oh man, a, a couple months ago. And then this was sent recently. Holy smokes, that's gorgeous. Let me, let me embiggen the video. <laughs> Look yeah, at those so have... blues. Yeah. Those are beautiful. So there's actually Look at the oh, glitters. Sorry, I keep hitting my mic. So there's actually a range of the kinds of materials that I've used represented in these. Sure. Which is pretty and impressive. That makes now a great time to segue into pigments again. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, also as far as the binders, because I started off using the Sennelier premixed solution. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you can see that for some of these. They're actually still kind of squishy and sticky. Yeah, you said they never awesome. harden. Yeah, well, they, they really don't. Now, to be um, fair, some people do like that. They would reactivate yes. very quickly. Yes, they do reactivate very quickly, but personally, I don't like that. Sure. So that's not what I opt for. Um, I know this one right here was definitely using my own homemade gum arabic mix because it was it's a little more yellowish, mm -hmm. and that's the thing about uh, about that particular mix is it yeah. does slightly discolor. Yeah, but and that's I mean honestly that is common with gum arabic to mm -hmm. slightly discolor things, just a little bit yellow. And this is actually. Yeah, these two are the same pigments right here. This one's using the Windsor Newton Gum Arabic, which dries hard. So, yeah. And what pigments, I mean, I know th this represents a lot. Of, so can we, can we talk about categories of pigments? We talked about Perlex, which is a material made for artists and it's manufactured to yes. be professional quality. Yep. It's archival, basically. What are some of the other, I mean, with, with other watercolors that you might buy in a store, many of them are made from minerals or from earth yes. even. Yes, or, uh, or completely synthetic pigments that yeah. they've made. That, honestly, I, I'm not that interested in making paints personally. I'd love to play uh, with paints next time we see each other in person. It'd be fun, but I don't want to make them. But I actually want <laughs> to play around with using uh, dye-based, like natural dye base, like indigo woad, for example, and making mm -hmm. half pans out of that. So like when we start talking synthetics, that's where my brain starts going, even though those are not synthetic. That's a, I mean, that's another conversation though. Um, okay, yeah. so what are your experiences with making paints from minerals? Um, generally not very good because all I've got to grind them at home is a mortar and pestle. Do you, do you have um, those handy? I don't because okay. they got, so 
the thing is, is when you're trying with minerals, you get really curious and you try a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like I showed you the chrysocolla earlier. Mm -hmm. This is a very soft rock. Fuchsite is also very soft. Mica so this base. will grind very easily. Mm -hmm. These two, I, I, I would recommend using anything mica based in a mortar and pestle because that'll grind up like a dream without yeah. wrecking it. Yeah. However, oh boy. Um, <laughs> so I saw a very shiny rock at a mineral show once called Carborundum. And it's beautiful. It but... is gorgeous. And it is very sharp. I mean, isn't it it's... like really high on the Mohs scale? Like, isn't it like a nine? It is. It is a 9.5. Mm. Um, it is a man made substance. Kabocha, Wait. don't they use that on like drill bits to drill into the earth? <laughs> they, they do. Mm. I did, how did you I how did, did you think you were gonna break this down? <laughs> That's um Do you I have a diamond mortal and mortar and pestle that I don't know about? Nope, I have a granite one or had a granite one. And, <laughs> did you um, tear it up with this? It it did. It Ooh. tore this to shreds. Ooh. So 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute now. Okay. So pro tip from a not from a not pro, you should probably buy your minerals pre pulverized if you're new to this and you don't want to have to know yes. much about geology. Barring that, you should have a healthy interest in geology. <laughs> yes. Which to be fair, many <laughs> artists do. Many artists are actually yes. rock hounds, so Yes, but um remember it, when, before you buy rocks just remember to check the Mohs hardness on Wikipedia or Mindat or Gemdat because it will save you so much frustration because I was like, why can't I get this to grind up? It's a beautiful you specimen know. though. It is. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is actually one of my favorite pieces that I've got in my rock collection. So, so. it wasn't a waste. It just, it just wasn't used for its originally purchased purpose. Yeah, and the thing is, is, I can get tiny little pieces off of it yeah. and get it to break apart enough so that it's basically glitter. Yeah, but that's yeah I have about some. The extent, yes. Yeah. So that's, you can't, and also it's incredibly sharp. So it would be like yes. glass glitter plus ten. Yes. So yeah, glass. <laughs> that yeah. brings up a really good point. Also, if you were grinding your own minerals, you should probably, and by probably I mean you should. Work in a well-ventilated area with proper eye protection and possibly gloves. Yes, gloves, eye protection, and I would actually suggest a mask. Um, yeah, 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 you don't want to breathe that in. That'll tear up your lungs. Yeah. In the case of chrysocolla, this is copper-based. This will, this will make you sick. Yeah. Yeah, um, a lot of, a lot of the um, copper-based watercolor paints are carcinogenic, at least according to the state of California. Yeah, um, this is seleni or selenite. Um, I can't remember if this is toxic, but again, you don't want to breed this in because the small particles will get lodged in your lungs and cause problems. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, where your, where your actual uh, personal protective gear. Yep. When Gotta have some stuff. PPE on hand when you are grinding your own minerals. Did you yes. did you end up buying like a rock grinder or something? I remember you were talking about possibly doing that a while back. So I did get a rock tumbler, mm -hmm. but um, the thing is, is with that you, well, this mm -hmm. in powder form is used in in rock tumblers, by the way. <laughs> so it's not it's um, not going anywhere. It's no, not getting it's not tumbled. Going anywhere. No, it's not getting tumbled. But the thing is with rock tumblers, unless you're unless you're only tumbling one specimen and you are going to be tumbling it in, you know, a barrel where you're pretty sure you're not gonna get shavings off the side of it while you're doing it and you're not adding in the carborundum to the, to it, you uh you probably don't wanna use that because what you're gonna get out of that is kind of a mess. So on that note most of us at home, we're not going to have access to better than a granite mortar and pestle. That I mean, you can go out and buy one of those at a kitchen supply store. You can order it online. You could, you could go to um, like TJ Maxx, those kind of stores, and find them. Yep. Um, what kind of minerals, what are some basic minerals that one could like go buy 
and grind themselves. Like theoretically, you could probably go out, like if you live in an area that has like the red ochre dirt, like Mississippi, for example, you could oh, yeah. probably microwave it maybe or find some way to kill whatever is actually living in the dirt Clove at the oil. moment. Huh? Oh, clove, clove oil, oil will kill it. Perfect. Perfect. Because we don't want any, um, we don't want any mold, pet mold. But you do, you do probably want to let that dry out mm -hmm. a bit. Um, like spread it out real thin, maybe put it in the sun and let the sun bake it UV rays. Yeah. Um, but of course, when you go to make it into paint, use clove oil, you know, and just be advised. You're going to want to experiment with that to make sure that it keeps, um, I used to have some uh, goethite, which is, you know, an iron-based, if I remember right, that's iron-based, but that had a very nice uh, yellow to it. Um, but yeah, anything mica-based honestly will work. This um, this would you know, be clay. goethite in like, a, um, this is Daniel Smith's ha half pan palette. So that's the color you're talking about. Yeah, I think so. Um, and lemon oil, actually, I would not use that because lemon, o or not lemon oil, but lemon juice is acidic and is likely to cause problems with your paper. Yeah, starting in the long the term. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at um, maybe talc-based stuff, mica-based stuff, um, mm -hmm. maybe if iron you're using, oxides. Yes. It, if you're using anything with talc, again, personal protective gear, yes. that stuff is often found near asbestos um, and will wreck your lungs. Yeah. Um, so we have talked about, so we talked about minerals. What are yes. some other possible pigments we could use? We talked about perlex and we talked about minerals. <laughs> so um, I, I, I mentioned early on that I experimented with makeup pigment because I like shiny nail polish. Now, wait a minute. Regarding makeup pigment, could I just, like, buy some makeup from, like, Dollar Tree that's real pretty and crush it up and mix it with gum arabic? Would that make good watercolor? No, it's going to have oil in it. I, that's a, that's, I do not recommend. Um, actually, um, in the collection that you have from me and the, the ones that are wrapped in pink are made out of makeup that I picked up from Makeup Geek. Oh, cool. Um, or pigment that I got from Makeup Geek. Um, it's a, it was, all three of them were gorgeous pigments, but, um, they were also going to have a problem. Uh, they, they all have problems with like trying to actually get it to stick on the paper because they're kind of oily. Yeah. And we are going to swatch these tonight. I just wanted to kind of lay down a baseline of like the materials and a bit of the process. So yeah. I, these aren't just out here for show. We're actually going to take a look at them and you're going to talk about them as well. So makeup grade yeah. pigments, but it can't be the stuff already in makeup. That's a no go. Correct. Correct. Um, so I found a whole bunch of stuff on Etsy. Um, as you can see, you can probably might be able to read some of this um, and um so. i can't drop that in chat right now but i will put it in the description for this stream once the stream is over so if you're in if you're interested in making your own watercolor pigments or watercolor paints all of these links are going to be in the description at the end of the stream yeah um and yeah to, to to answer your question about can flowers be boiled down for light color overlays yes um, but you will have to worry about discoloration over time. Yeah. So and, and just some be of them aware are very of that. Fugitive. Yes. So permanence is going to be an issue as well as long-term color. There used to be a dye making site and I can't find them anymore. They used to sell dye based, like natural dye based watercolors, but they explained the dye making process and wardens and that kind of thing. And that's what kind of got me interested in wanting to make uh, basically lake pigments, which is when you use a mordant to press a, precipitate the dye particles out of the solution mm -hmm. into basically a pigment. Uh, and that's something I want to do together at some point. Yes. That actually sounds quite fun, and it's something that I haven't tried myself. So, anyway. Etsy. Um, yeah, so I went on Etsy. Um, I actually found a couple of different sellers, uh, not just on Etsy, th that were selling various pigments. I started off with this red paint, 
or this red pigment that's oh, like a looks, five stage color shift. Is that shift. the same as what's in the the container right there? Um, so it's actually this. No, this is actually okay. a different color. I was like, dang, they look no. so different. No, these two are the same. Oh, okay, okay, much closer. Yes, but you can see the um, duochrome effect a little bit better in the half pan. Yeah, so it looks kind of orangey um, at some angles and reddish at others. Um, goodness, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> um, I am having an evening. That's okay. I'm gonna answer a question. I'll just go ahead and answer it out loud right now. So Yatsu said that they'd like to make their own pigments for their Copic markers eventually, and it would be replacing water with alcohol, but they wondered if that's even possible. N man, that's a, that's no. a tricky, wicked question, yeah. The base answer is no, because Copic markers are dye-based, so um, you're not really dealing with pigment particles, you're dealing with a dye in a solution, whereas mm -hmm. we're talking about pigments, so we are talking about small particles. Now, uh, Windsor Newton a few years ago made their pigment markers and those were pigment based and you can buy pigment based watercolors but those tend to not work so well in marker format unless you have a pump action like some of the acrylic pins do. So I would recommend if you really want to try it you can try it with a dried out marker or you can try it with a um, like a, an empty Copic, but I have tried to make alcohol-based inks using liquid watercolors in the past, and eventually all of your color will precipitate out and make this nasty sludge at the bottom of your alcohol, whatever alcohol solution you use. So it doesn't really work that well. It's a really fun idea, but I don't think we at home have the materials or the ability to do that because you would probably need to uh, use a centrifuge maybe to really get them suspended. And then it would probably be kind of like mayonnaise where you would need to create a, a, a suspension and maybe even use our oil particles to do that. Um, I don't know that I could do that at home. <laughs> it, it would be difficult to do mm -hmm. it reliably. Mm -hmm. um, you could probably but... do it with acrylic though. Yeah, probably. Um, could probably also just use like fountain pen ink. Quite honestly, oh, that's fountain true. pen yeah. ink is the go-to. Okay, um, sorry, I interrupted you. We were talking about color shift colors purchased from yes. Etsy. Yes, because I love these. Um, because one, they're sparkly. Two, you get multiple colors. Yeah, and they're very yeah. affordable and they're pre mulled You don't really have to do much to them, right? Yeah, well, the thing is, is that because these are basically a special effect, um, you don't have to worry too much about mulling because you're already expecting the pigment particles to be a little bit larger than mm -hmm. what you would expect for a standard, you know, watercolor. So when so, you buy these particles, you're really not going to get like, like we can take a look at these right here. You're not going to um, get an even layer of color the way you might with... Um, other types of watercolor, you're going to get, it's really more like a glitter effect. Yeah. In a lot of these cases, I mean, some of them you can get super smooth, but it depends on the pigment that you're using to begin with. Um, but yeah, so for these, uh, did you want me to show you basically my process? Yes, please, <laughs> please show us your process. All right. So be prepared for the lack of science in this. I've got a little well, pipette. That that's I'm why using. you're doing it at home and you're not selling them on, on Etsy or anything is because for right now, this is just a fun hobby. So you don't really work with like an exact formula. You kind of eyeball everything. Yep. Yep. And after a while you get kind of used to the amount that you need. Like this is actually a lot of pigment in here. So I'm not going to just dump it all. Although I am really tempted to, um, cause this will get all in the air and I really don't want to be sneezing you know, red for oh, the next no. week. Yeah, and that would definitely happen. Yes. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that that's also generally not safe to do. But no, not so good for the brain meats or the lungs. Yeah. The so it, what are you working on? So I've got, actually, this is the most expensive piece of hardware quite, in my quite, studio. Uh, hard to find. <laughs> Very expensive. It's a... Um, it is a piece of watercolor paper with dollar store glass. 
Um, <laughs> literally, it is, it is just a piece of glass from a picture frame. Well, that works. That's real. That's really affordable. Does it have to be glass? Could you do it on like a ceramic plate? Um, possibly. I use the glass because it's easier to clean and yes. you're less likely to shatter it. Um, I mean, the ceramic plate is going to be curved slightly. So you're like, that's true. To... That's true. And it might be harder to scrape it off. In fact, I have a ceramic. Well, I thought I had one. I don't. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. So here we go. And did so you tape put... your work surface down first? I did. Okay. It's mostly because I don't want it shifting all over the place. That sounds very um, wise. Yes. Um, so I usually put the gum Arabic down first. So that way it'll just kind of catch the pigment when I scoop oh, it out. That's very smart. Because if knife. you just dumped it on the glass, it would kind of just plume everywhere. Mm -hmm. As I'm adding the gum Arabic, I learned that the hard way. Oh, you sneezed red for a while. Uh, well, it was more like purple <laughs> when I learned no that. At least no one mistook it for blood. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look how pretty and shiny it is once you start adding. I mean, it was already pretty and shiny, but you get this really nice, like, sheen. It's like candy apple red. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I showed this to my mom, and she was like, you know... We could paint a car with this. And that's actually Speaking true. of painting a car with that, most watercolor pigments originally come from the automotive industry. In fact, most pigments come from, like even cosmetic, it's due to demand in the automotive industry. Yeah, these are no different. Um, several of these are actually used in automotive applications. So you will find that they are extremely light fast. Perfect. That's what many yeah. artists are looking for. And you wouldn't yeah. think, when, when you think of special effects like glitter, watercolors, you wouldn't think of light fastness, you know? Usually I feel like it's kind of treated like it's a bit of a frivolous thing. So it's nice to know that uh, it's going to last as long as you want it to last, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because, it, yeah, it actually, um, at one point over the summer I found an automotive pigment seller who had a whole bunch of uh chameleon and color shift pigments. I was pigments. about to ask about that if there's if it's at all economical for an individual to purchase automotive grade pigments. Um yes. So it really depends on what you're looking at and the quantity. Usually I purchase my stuff in no larger than 10 gram quantities. Um and I try to make sure my price point is no more than a dollar fifty per gram. Wow. Okay. So it's actually kind of cheap. Yeah. Um. And just so you know, usually depending on the pigment, about a gram mm -hmm. fills a half pan. Okay. So you're gonna get about ten half pans. Yeah. And you know they make like the little smaller ones. In fact, you included some, the little chiclets. Mm -hmm. You can get yep. even more out of these. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that is what I learned over the summer. So that was actually pretty useful for me. And it's really good um, to have those kind of rules set for yourself. I'm not great necessarily about setting those kind of rules for myself. And then I end up with junk I don't need. Oh, well, I mean, if you want to see one of the pigments that went way over that price point. Yes, so of course. So there's a grade of color shift pigments known as like the super chameleons oh that's gorgeous that's like so this blue is... and green and purple yeah this is um so this one for two grams of it cost me about 18 bucks so yeah <laughs> it was a little bit expensive yeah yeah and that's yeah that's when the husband starts going so when you get to sell these <laughs> Thankfully, he hasn't been like that, but I, but I haven't been buying anything crazy, um, you know, in the past couple months since, you know, th th there's been some stuff going on at work. Yeah. So. Yeah. You've been good and this has been your treat. Yes. Okay. So you put the pigment into the gum Arabic and mm -hmm. you're just kind of mixing it. You're not really mulling it on your glass sheet, which looks like it would clean up very, very easily. And since it's watercolor, oh, yeah. you could just probably clean this up with water. 
Um, soap and water, yep. So for the most part, when you're using cosmetic grade pigment, you don't have to worry about toxicity. And as long as you're not buying um, like plastic glitters, you don't have to worry about microplastics going into the ocean either. So, I mean, in a way, it's kind of like um, a low ethical issue watercolor. Yeah, and I mean, if you actually wanted to use glitters, you could pick up some kelp-based glitters if permanence isn't yes. a concern to oh you. Oh my gosh, yeah. That, for for the dye project, the dye-based, homemade dye-based watercolor project that we are someday going to do, we should do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I found a few places. Yeah, start sourcing it. Uh, so Joseph <laughs> asks, do most car paints use paints with multiple pigments? I can't answer that. I'm not a car person. Yeah, I actually don't know. You'd have to ask somebody in the or who does automotive painting. Yeah. Um, because they'll be able to get the pigment information for you. Like most of the places for these for these special effects pigments will not tell you what colors are in it. Of course not. Because it's their custom well, mix. Usually, well, it, it's actually so. What I found the most information I found is usually. This is some kind of a mica yeah. mixed or treated with, um, with you know, titanium or yeah. something. Um, so it's been basically color treated. So, you know, you've got kind of that, that aura effect to it for some of them. Yeah. So while well, that's really cool, it's just like, ugh, I want to know what's in it. <laughs> I know, I know there is no way in, in heck I can do this at home, but... Well, they're not worried about you doing it in like your microwave or on the stovetop. They're worried about their competitors copying lipstick cherry red 2020. I know, right? So um, generally, how long do you mix the paint and what kind of consistency are you looking for? So with these, I mix it for usually, you know, 10, 15 minutes tops. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but the consistency that you're seeing here is about where I like it. So, you know that kind of cornstarch in water? Yeah, sort of slurry. Stuff? Yeah, gravy. Yeah, but it's got that weird little resistance to it. That's about where I want it to be. So, yeah. Um, and I actually strongly recommend using a... Uh, a metal palette knife for this yeah because otherwise you're just gonna be frustrated the plastic palette knife stain that's true they do so yeah. bad and you've never had any problem with any kind of a reaction between the pigments and your knife nope okay i wouldn't see why i mean it's a paint knife but i just thought i would ask yeah no that's totally a fair question and because if i was speaking if I of was fair using... questions joseph wants to know when you're gonna launch your asmr paint mixing channel like, to be, <laughs> no, for to be real, though, I was thinking to myself, like, I wonder how many times you over mix it because you've just asmar yourself. Well, OK, so um, there are nights when so I, I had a friend over a while ago um, that while I was making paint. And so we decided to hop on a video call with some other folks and just mixed paint and it's a thing that people want to see yes i don't i don't understand why but okay it's so relaxing like you're already giving me like the the chill vibes to be to be real <laughs> frank there are a few artists who are also asm artists but in mm -hmm. my opinion we need more of them because the sound of like a of charcoal on a paper or someone doing your portrait and they actually know what they're doing or quietly describing their watercolor mixing process is so relaxing for me. Yeah, it, I, I just like making paint because it's something very, very relaxing yeah. compared to everything else Ugh. that has been going on this year. Yes, it's, it's also, it scratches that like creative itch without it's low stakes. Once you kind of have yeah. your formula figured out, it's low stakes. Yeah, it, it is very low stakes. And it also kind of hits that urge for something glittery that yeah. I have. And then when it's all said and done, I can send it out to friends and be like, hey, I know you guys are going to enjoy this. Yeah, that's true. It seems very win-win. 
yeah, it, it's a win win all around. Um, I'm yeah, like, and... getting, I'm getting all like zoned out just watching you. <laughs> I gotta like not look for a second so my brain can wake back up. Is super relaxing though. <laughs> for reals, if you started an ASMR paint mixing channel, you'd be way more popular than I am. <laughs> I, I I don't think I have the right voice for that, but hey, your you'd voice. Be, you'd be my, surprised. My paint. I mean, I'll narrate it if you want. Oh, I could just talk in the Pico voice the entire time. Okay, we're not going. We're not going into that. We're that like now we're getting now we're having like a conversation like we're not streaming. Uh, yeah, I'm like super picky about my ASMR people. Like I can't do any of the ones that are like eating food that creeps me out oh, or no. like uses a fake voice, like a high, like a high pitch baby voice. It just like, ugh. but I know it works for some people. So I'm not like yucking anybody else's yum. Oh, what are you yeah. adding? A little more gum Arabic? Yeah, it was just in the pipette and I saw no problem with just so, dumping it in. Are you going to add a humectant? Uh, no, not in this case. Okay. Um, with the gum air or with the Windsor and Newton gum Arabic, I don't find that to be necessary. Okay, that's good to know. So it's one. I mean, even though honey's cheap, it's one less thing you got to do. Yeah. And yeah. what about that clove oil? Um, you know, actually, I will add that to this. Um, so usually, depending on the amount that you're mixing, I would, you know, I'd be like, just add it to your gum Arabic mix. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that to the Windsor and Newton stuff. But let's just add a drop. So you really don't need much. No, you don't need much at all. And how many pans would this make it? I'm guessing two to three. Uh, probably close to four, actually. Okay, so really a little goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, unfortunately... Yeah, and I've actually got my pans out here. I already magneted oh, them ages ago. Oh, you're smart. That's handy. Yeah. So this is one yeah. of those things that the initial price point is a little like to get started with this. If you wanted to make a palette of this, a little hefty, but it lasts forever. You could make enough for you and all your friends. Oh, you know, yeah. something. And I probably shouldn't mention this on stream, but something I thought about asking you to do was paying you to do um, to make a palette of like a set number of colors. And I would for my back for my patrons to send out as like a thank you because some of you guys have been with me for like four almost four years now like a really long time and I, I thought that could be like a really cool partnership that could be an interesting thing to do we'll have to talk about that offline yeah. oh for sure yeah <laughs> maybe we can make it a project when I go visit you yes we got room now I mean yeah and you see how how straightforward this is yeah just pick out the pigments i'll bring the pans and you know we'll just assemble some stuff and turn it into a a process that sounds like it could be a lot of fun yeah i'm, sorry, I'm so i gotta i gotta stop looking because i keep like <laughs> get, i keep falling like half asleep it's way too mesmerizing <laughs> i'm just like zoning out and my brain's like Shutdown mode activated. And I was like, okay, sleep time. No, for real, you're on to something with it. So even if you just like yeah. recorded yourself m making paint sometimes and shared it on Instagram, it would be way, way too good. Could not look away. Yeah. Um, and Joseph has a question for you, Becca. He asked a dangerous question. He asked if yeah, I used he's... any of your he... paint in 7-inch Kara. And I finished painting the last chapter I was going to paint for volume two before you sent me even this box. So I haven't. Yes. And also when I'm painting Kara pages, because they are scanned and then printed in a book, I avoid effects paints because the effects are just never yes. as nice. But I do use effects painting commissions. Yeah, so the seven inch Kara, actually, I was going to, I was going to second that thought and be like, please don't. That, no, I, I have not going to work. No, but it would not it, be as nice. Yeah, it, it would just re it would result in sadness. So, um, yeah, uh, commissions. Yeah. I actually use these in my sketchbook. That too. So, yeah, that well, that was one of the first things that I learned to do this summer is how to do hand binding. Oh, you are such a talent. 
you need, I mean, I uh, say, I've said this to you before that I think you should do like a very small bespoke Etsy shop that, and you only deal with a handful of clientele, but it's all very lovingly made. Cause I feel like with a lot of, I, bu I try to buy a lot of handmade stuff and I mm -hmm. often feel like it's made by people who don't really understand the market they're making it for. And I know that's like awful to say, but like, like with books, it's never the right paper for me. Right. The spoiled one. I mean, yeah, I, I used um, I used my Stonehenge cold press in there, and it was just, it was enjoyable, and it's been in it, it's been a joy to have a sketchbook just made out of that. Oh, Becca, you might actually have been closer to correct for two pans. This is coming out to probably be three. And when it dries, how bad is shrink? Uh, not too bad. Usually I fill these to the top of the pans, as you see. Um, so this will probably shrink by about 10%, so it'll be just under the lid, or the mm -hmm. edge of the pan. So Joseph wants to know if you talked about ways people mess up mixing paints other than not adding a humectant like honey. Um, adding too much water... So when would you add water? Well, oh, to the gum arabic mixture? Mhm. Mm I I have done that before. Um and that will result in a lot more shrinkage. Um and sometimes like you'll get paint that is basically powder if you don't have if you have too much water in your initial mix cuz it all and dries not in out. A binder. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so it'll seem awesome when you first test it out because like i could dip my brush into what's on the glass right now and actually just test that out and swatch it and it'd be fantastic you know on that note i'm gonna hmm. i'm gonna switch the views real quick so people okay. can see what i'm talking about on that note so if you made your own watercolors and you like that from the tube consistency this kind of palette, which isn't super common in the US, but you can get them on AliExpress. It's a acrylic palette and it has like a silicone gasket. Hang on a sec, what? Where's your thing? It's in that bathroom. Oh. Sorry, Joseph's getting me a cup of water so we can start uh, swatching. And you, you just, yeah, you fill it with two watercolors and it keeps them fresh. So if you make your own watercolors and you're like, well, I'm not really a half pan kind of person. I don't like how they reactivate. You can get this kind of palette on, Amazon has them too. Um, I'll pop some links to these in the show notes and this would keep it, you know, fresh from the tube fresh. Yep. And actually I would say I am about done. Becca, you were right on with your guess of three pans. Very good. Woo, too bad <laughs> I am terrible at estimating volume for literally everything else. <laughs> You when it comes very well. to leftovers, is always like I'm always either like too big a container or too small a container. Well, see, that's why I got those like tiny little pans. Um, actually, let me. My Jerry's started selling the the um, the card sized Stonehenge. Oh sheets. yeah. So I've been picking those up like catnip. So let's see, I'm just gonna, so I did use this to scrape off my, my palette knife, but that's fine. Just get a little bit of water, pick some of that up and it goes down on the paper just fine. Oh, that's over on Bika's side. So. Hang on a sec, sorry. Yeah, you're fine. No worries. I will move it so people can see. No, no, I Not actually really moved, moved it. Yeah. It's moved. Yeah, I did. I mean, so, it really stands out on the black paper. It does. It's so wonderful. I, I really enjoy it so much, honestly. Sorry, I'm looking for, I realized I need some white watercolor paper too. I got my black yes. watercolor paper out, but I need some white watercolor paper. So I don't know if you'll see the color shift in this as much on camera, but this actually shifts between a really nice orange 
and a very brilliant red, and it's very autumn-y, in my opinion. So, yeah. Okay, so, um, when you're drawing out your watercolor pans, do you have any recommendations? Um, like a well, dehumidifier? So, I tried a dehumidifier. That helped over the summer because it was incredibly humid. Yeah. Um, but uh, from a cost effectiveness standpoint, those things can run 200 bucks. So don't recommend. Well, um, well, hang on though. Well, if you do paint regularly and you live in a humid area, the stress it will save you is probably worth oh, yes. it. And they do have cheaper yeah. single room humidifiers as well. Now, I, she's not saying go buy one to make paint. But I think no. we're both saying if you paint all the time and you get tired of fighting with, you know, your paints never dry, your watercolor is never dry, it might be worth investing in. Yeah, it really depends. And these actually don't lift a whole lot with this particular gum Good Arabic mix, which is very nice. So... Actually, it's still lifting because it's the paper is still wet, but that's fine. But either way, it works out pretty well. Um, but um, I also use silica gel packs. Smart. And that's why I have them in that giant box, is so it'll dry out. Um, so, yeah, uh, Becca, if you want to switch the view and prepare for swatching. Yeah, okay, so we are going to start with uh, the oldest first. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my shame. And I think this is actually cosmetic grade glitter, right? Like a hollow, hollow glitter, holographic yes. glitter? Yes, yes, that actually was. And look how clever you are. You made this, like cute little second tier. So do I need yeah. to pre-activate these? Do I need to put a drop of water in them to get them? Um, you know, for, for fairness, I would probably do that with oh. anything that you're yeah. going to swatch. That's usually, in fact, I think I almost always do that unless I know they have a tendency to be gum. Oh, wow. Uh, they are absorbing the water. Let yeah. me try to get the camera close i'll hold it down so you guys can actually see because they yeah, are so that's, thirsty i mean it's like what I was soaking in like about. a desert yeah and that's what i was talking about with the aquasol they're mm -hmm. basically when that dried out it was basically powder yeah yeah i can i can so, see that yeah and that's why i was like hey becca send those back to me i will remix them i refused um, I was secretly <laughs> you hoarding. Got busy. Huh? You were busy. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, um, it, and it works in our favor tonight, though. Okay. Yeah, and my other complaint is those don't go down very evenly. But, you know, that was a thing that I learned because I went to use them. And, you know, it, I. <laughs> When it comes to these paints, I'm very much uh, of the mind of eat your own dog food. Yeah. Yeah, if you make something and you wouldn't paint. And, I, and that kind of goes back to my complaint a little earlier that I feel like a lot of the people who make things for artists don't use their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Or they used to, but they don't still make those sort of things or they don't still like make art. So, oh, yeah, look, these are no. Can I can I rag on these? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Please they like, do. Okay. They like, man, they chunk up. Okay. Like, like you, they like, I'm not explaining it well at all, but if you've ever had paints that did that, like they cake the pan or rather they cake the, the brush. Yeah. Yeah. No, I am totally fine with you ragging on them because you've moved yeah. past this. Yeah. Yeah. I've moved past that and I figured out the fix for them and the fix is a little bit of humectant. But you know, this is also a problem I have seen with handmade watercolors that are being sold online. Yeah. So this isn't like um, a unique problem. This is this is a pretty common handmade watercolor problem. 
Oh yeah, this one especially. It's, just, it's like paste, you know? Like yep. it just, and then it gets all over your brush and then it gets all up in the water. So basically you wait, if you paid for these, you wasted a bunch of paint because they need that humectant to keep them from globbing all over your brush. And this isn't a particularly, ooh, I don't know why it does not like that paper. It like didn't want to show up at all. Also, if yeah. I have anybody new in the audience, uh, I hope you keep in mind that Kabocha made these and that we're good friends. <laughs> and I have the yeah. utmost respect for Kabocha. So me complaining about these is done with permission. I'm not just yeah. ragging. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, you know, as soon as I discovered it was a problem, I was like, hey, Becca, maybe <laughs> don't use those because you're just going to be very frustrated. I might actually send them back. I love the colors. I might actually take you up on that offer to remill if it's still on oh, the table. Oh, that's fine. And then oh, we yeah. can do a stream where totally. you show people how to salvage terrible watercolors. I mean, quite honestly, I don't mind doing that. G generally, when people pay for bad watercolors, my advice to them is don't buy bad water. I don't like spending yep. money to fix somebody else's mistakes, but it is a yeah. helpful skill to know. Yeah, in this case, you know, one, Becca didn't pay for them, and two, nope. I was like, Ooh, hey, Becca, pretty. you want to try my latest experiment? And I was like, yes. <laughs> that's how this goes. My husband won't it's... let me make these kinds of things because it, I would spend so much money and nothing would come of it. And then he'd be like, why don't you sell them to help recoup some of the costs? And I would be like, no, they're not perfect yet. Yeah, that's actually kind of where I'm at, and that's part of why I've, like, stopped making stuff, because... Yeah. Yeah. It, that, and I don't want to deal with customer service. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I enjoy people, but at the same time... Customer there is a service point. is a different animal. Yeah. And the thing is, is, I believe if you're buying something, you deserve to buy it from somebody who's willing to give you the time and attention that you as a client need yeah. for whatever product they're selling. That's true. So, Ooh, you know. that purple. That's pretty. Yeah. And, like, I also can't sit there and, like, disclose the exact ingredients that are used in these pigments because That's I true. don't even know. Yeah. So I don't feel comfortable selling them um, on mass, mass because market. I don't want, yeah, I, I don't want somebody to, to come on and, you know, buy it for their younger child and then, you know, their kid eats it and they get sick. Yeah. For example, if you're working with clove oil, you absolutely don't want to use that around your pets um, or in an area where they can lick it up because yeah. that's extremely toxic for them so for instance my kitten loves to climb into my lap and i've had to take steps to make sure he doesn't do that tonight because it would not be safe for him right isn't that right how i like how he when you need him to meow he won't yeah i know he he was conked out how many calories are in my half pants? <laughs> Joseph wants to know how many calories are in these half pants because he's gonna he's gonna um, eat them as soon as the stream is over. Oh my! No. Well, I would not recommend that. They'll no. probably make your stomach upset. Very but sick. If you, if you must know, burn them and see how much energy or burn them and see how long it takes for the water to boil. We should do that. We should do a series of how many calories. <laughs> Look at that though. That's cool. This is now glitter has a not so savory nickname that I won't mention, but anyone who's familiar <laughs> with it knows what I'm talking about. And you can see why. That's cool. Yeah. Not as cool on the white paper, but still so cool on the black paper. Dang. Okay. I'm going to have to refresh my cup look at this it looks like a cup full of magic though please don't drink that that is not a new starbucks drink although starbucks can take that name if they want <laughs> all right so yeah, that I'm... was batch number one cur or batch number one 2020 that you sent to me yes yes 
That was uh, made after... At, oh, boy. That was made after the long months of, uh, of respiratory illness. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's, that's quite so. a thing to go into. Yeah, well, I mean, what else was I going to do? I couldn't sit up long enough to draw. I, I could sit up long enough to paint. So it could also and, be a good hobby for people who um, may be bedridden at times or may have unreliable health, especially if you're working with non-toxic uh, materials mm -hmm. and you're still wearing a mask. Yep. And Joseph, uh, do I name my paints? I only started recently. Oh, so these don't have a name. Uh, yes. The, those are also, you know, Prolex paints. So I know what you should name might... this one. Um, burn it box? No, it's better. I mean, it's better than burn it box. Okay. But yeah. Um, so if you want to go ahead and get the second. Yes, box. I want, give me a second. I need to switch this cup out with clean water. Yep. And you can fill folks in on what's up with this box. So the second box, oh boy, that was my, <laughs> that was my first foray into the chameleon colors. Um, yeah, that one. So that one was made with uh, the Sennelier pigments or the Sennelier watercolor binder. Um, and I also did that um, with a whole bunch of pigments, like the first couple of manufacturers that I found. The first two colors I got through a place called Solar Color Dust, um, which specializes in color change pigments. Um, the purple opal is actually one of their glitters, which is very fine. Um, blueberry and lava, or blueberry lava, hollow, or hollow and green tea. Those three come from a seller that does, um, that sells their materials for lamp working. So that was Jet Age Studio. And I really like their stuff. Um, yeah. So, um, but those three oh, are, are all mean. used. Uh, those three all use a honey based, or all five use a honey based binder. Okay. Instead of traditional gum Arabic. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. Not at all. I mean, that's, that's, I think that's part of like what makes the stream the stream is sometimes people watch just to like hang out on a Saturday night since many of us can't go anywhere. And you did such a yeah. nice job wrapping these two. <gasps> I did. My only regret is that the magnets on those are awful. But so I know, I know you these live kind and of you magnets. Learn. Yeah, I've bought these kind yeah. of magnets. All right, so full disclosure, um, this is the first time I am unwrapping them. I held on to all of these for a specific stream. Uh, Kabocha tried to get me to do them, to try them out first, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do it on stream." So a warning, because those are honey based. Oh yeah, they're probably look at gonna that. Stick to the lid. Yeah. Wow. I have mixed feelings about this. Part of my like my tryptophobia is all freaked out, and part of me wants to <laughs> lick it. That's probably not a good uh, response. Okay, so what I'm gonna swatch from is I'm gonna swatch from these. Actually, I should try scraping it. Okay, so this is what? Too much honey? No, that's actually the result of... Uh, so I would throw anything that's honey-based in the freezer. Because, oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, honey. So it doesn't dry completely. Mm, okay, so you did, you did something funky with the molecular structure, I guess. <laughs> no. No, it's just... It went through the USPS and... That also went through the worst of the delays. Yup. I think oh, that, this one's okay. Ooh. I think one of the boxes at least uh, ended up getting shipped back to my house three times wow. before it finally hit the destination. So it sat in the mailbox in the hot summer heat for days. Yeah. Yeah. But if you and add then, water and to it, it, it it'll be fine. Then it came to me in Louisiana. So. Yeah. So that is something, if one were to make these to sell, 
you need to definitely keep that in mind is the shipping conditions. Excuse me. Would you throw mm -hmm. some of those silica packs? If you were selling these, would you throw like a silica pack in with them to help with that? Potentially. Oh, this is a... Um, another sticky one. Yeah. Ooh, it's so hot. You can't tell except in that bubble and then it's like so pretty. Yeah, as soon as you get water on it, they'll mm -hmm. be great. Yeah, I'm not I'm not actually concerned. Even yeah. if I if I paid for these from like a stranger, I mostly would just be like, "Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what did that." Yeah, but hey, at least I know what did oh, it. Oh, <laughs> that's so that's going to be pretty. Green tea is going to be so pretty. Mhm. Mm Green tea is one of my favorites. I love these kind of green gold, spring green colors. They're so fresh. Oh, come on. Okay. So I would bet money you're never going to do that again. That particular no, that... process. Correct. And I'm a nerd and I'm trying to get them in the same order. Where's purple opal? Uh, uh, purple opal. Oh, there is it is. The... Oh, it doesn't look like it would yeah. be. Oh, wait till you long. see it on paper. And then hollow. And then green tea. Doo -doo. And for the tins, if, if you don't mind me asking, um, I was able to find them on Amazon, so it's not like they're impossible to find. Well, That's um, actually where I got them. Me? And I know Michael's sells the tins as well, but I frankly, I wouldn't pay Michael's prices for anything I would be doing um, in large quantities. They just tend to be too yep. expensive. Yep. Okay, you so that's- You are exactly correct. The second batch. So, yeah. And then you also sent me some dots and I'll show you what happened to them. They, to be fair, they arrived as dots. And then they traveled with me back to Nashville, and then they traveled with me to Louisiana, and they got smushed. Yup. The dots were just kind of leftovers from what I already had. Oh, so... I'm not complaining. I'm just apologizing to you, basically. Oh, yeah. I'm not even concerned. Okay, and then that's blueberry lava. They yeah. so sparkly. It yeah, and again, you do want to give some of those a second to, you know, absorb the water. Yeah, I was bad and I didn't pre -act. I got too excited <laughs> is the problem, and I didn't pre -act. <laughs> With the hollow, I can definitely see why you would need to do that, because the hollow is a little stubborn. Yes. Well, it basically is a glitter. Yeah. And so glitters in general would be kind of, uh, kind of stubborn? Yes. Yeah, the larger particle size means that you need to be more careful and allow it time to get to be picked up by your brush. Yeah. Um, because of glitter being glitter, I would probably use a synthetic brush with it, just as a note. This is a brush I don't care about, and I think it is yeah. a synthetic. It, yeah. Uh, well, mostly because you don't want glitter to it, live it, in your... Yeah, it'll contaminate. Yes. Yeah, and that's a thing. Um. So, Joseph, uh, is the gum Arabic necessary, or could someone just mix pigment and water right before they painted something? <laughs> yes, it's necessary. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Because you need... Because that's if like you my just nightmare. Do... If you just do pigment and water, it's not going to stick to the paper yep. long term. It, as soon it'll as it dries, eventually... basically, it'll flake off. Yep. Um, even what people used to do before gum arabic is they would use uh, egg as a binder, like egg tempera. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's not me laughing, by the way. It's not me laughing because it's a dumb question. It's a great question. It's me laughing because I know how bad that will turn out. Yes. Yeah, um, trust me, Ooh, I've tried. That's pretty. You really can see the duochrome, the the two colors shifting on the green tea on white. Yeah, you can definitely yeah. tell, too, that you learned a lot in between batches. 
And yeah. then I have some dots from this set to take a look at. So some of those dots are going to be Pearl X, mm -hmm. um, and other ones might be different paints, but we'll see. I can't remember what's what anymore. Well, you labeled them, so they are all Pearl yeah. X. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I actually labeled something for once. Yeah, and I also want to point say, there's nothing wrong with getting art supplies from Michaels. Uh, I get art supplies from Michaels pretty frequently. Um, I was just saying, if you're buying supplies to sell, now they do have a bulk option now. I haven't tried it out, but Michaels is just like notoriously kind of expensive. Yes. So that's why I was saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't get my, um, if I were manufacturing watercolors, I wouldn't necessarily get my packaging supplies from Michaels because that would get very expensive. Agreed. And these are all Perlex. So these are all like Babby's first easy watercolor pigment. Yep. Yeah, and those were literally like leftovers when I was making pans. So those were before I got the little chiclet pans. The chiclet pans are so cute. I see people on like AliExpress selling the, um, they're like even tinier than that, right? I've seen them. They're so cool. They're so tiny. They're like a single dot. Okay, so this is Perlex and Interference Violet. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people right now um, are, I got to I gotta think about how to say this kind of carefully because it kind, can be taken as a loaded question. I don't mean it like that. So a lot of people right now during COVID, since we also kind of have a recession going on, a lot of people mm -hmm. are using this as an opportunity to pursue art full time. Mm -hmm. And um, if one had the interest making good handmade art supplies might not be a bad way to go. No, no. Um, and I mean, I have, I'm happy to share my sources with folks, but bear in mind that I can't advise you mm -hmm. as to whether or not a seller's pigments are going to be good if I've never used them. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not just going to buy from some random person on Etsy to try no, out their pigments. You are very careful. If yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I, I mean, do your research, look for what makes the most sense for you before you buy and if you can find a uh, pigment in bulk and get your price point below the dollar a gram that would actually be fantastic but for well, instance yeah because then you can charge like at least five dollars a half pan and nobody mm -hmm. would bat an eye at that because you've already done a lot of the work mm -hmm. so these are the new ones they smell of clove oil, so they smell fantastic. And there's so many in here, I might have to get like a fresh sheet of paper. And then these also have <laughs> the little half chiclets. So do you want me to start with the half chiclets or do you want me to start with the purples? Um, so I think the half chiclets that I sent you are going to be the glow in the dark paints. Uh, I mean, I've got um, ideas so for chiclet that. In fact, I have a stream kind of planned around that, but that's like much later. Yeah. Yeah, those are the glow-in-the-dark paints. So, you probably want to hold off on those. But start with the purple ones if okay. you want. And then you also sent some pink ones and some of these. But I'll save them for after. Yeah. So what's different about this set? This is like the current culmination of all your knowledge. So... That was primarily, um, a lot of those you're going to find are probably just the straight gum Arabic, if not the homemade stuff. Um, I know the ones in pink are using some of my homemade binder. So those are going to be interesting. Okay. Um, but Were, those are, are the also... ones in pink actually before these? Because I can do those first. Yes. Should I do yes, them first then? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, those are also the cosmetic pigments. So that was like raw pigment that I got from Makeup Geek 
they're really gorgeous, but again, they're kind of oily. Oh, good to know. So, so one of the reasons oily is a problem is oil will discolor your paper. It will make some, it, it basically creates a blockage in your paper. So if you were to paint on top of it, it would create an area of resist where the water wouldn't seep through or the acrylic wouldn't adhere. So yes. you want to avoid going too oily because it's going, it will A, ruin the archivability of your paper and B, it will make it basically hard, more difficult to use. So this is yeah. called Vanilla Deception. Yep. This one is Strawberry Icing. Ooh, okay. Yes, I can tell that this one has. And these, these wrappers are like, candy like they're foil candy wrappers right yep yep so those are probably pretty affordable to get a hold of too yes yes they are and um, why do you wrap the paints for transit um mostly so they don't get stuck to the top of the tin ah uh, yeah they do look more professional like that and then this is called song of storms oh it's purple yeah I so for some reason, it made me think of uh, the Song of Storms from Zelda. So, you know. I'm going to go get a fresh cup of water and I'll be right back. Okay. Ha ha ha, Becca's away. Let's take over the stream. I'm joking. We could get Joseph to help take over the stream. And on my end, I'm actually setting out some of the chameleon pigments, which are the very light white ones that I mixed with a black pigment as a base. They didn't turn out super great, but they're still neat. How, what are you doing, buddy? How is my kitten, Sue? So I've been thinking about, sorry. So I've been thinking about this for a little while. Um, if you do Chinese hmm? watercolor, you can buy their pigments loose and their mineral pigments. And then you mix them with, this is Korean, but it's basically the same thing. Um, and in Japan, it's Nikuma. It's like an animal hide glue and you mix it as you go. Could hmm. one buy, those chinaound pigments and then just mix them with gum arabic if you wanted to or or even gum arabic and like makeup pigments i don't see why not that could be a way to kind of play around with uh natural earth pigments without investing a lot of time or energy mm -hmm. okay so these are whoa those are makeup pigments and yes who was your source for these if you don't mind me asking i got those through makeup geek makeup geek oh, that pink is they, so nice they have some gorgeous makeup so i mean realistically you know i i would probably get cosmetics through them if mm -hmm. i wore that if i wore that more but i don't leave my house and I well feel you. okay i actually do put up makeup Put on makeup more that now that I'm not leaving the house because I don't feel the need to look presentable for anyone. So I can make my eyelids as bright blue as I feel like. Yeah, you know, work isn't Ooh. there to keep me down. And these are not just used to make like eyeshadow or or lipstick or lip gloss. They're also used to make like nail polish, right? You can, yes. Um, I don't know that those particular ones are used for nail polish, but um, cosmetic grade pigments, uh, as long as it is solvent resistant, yeah, which your which vendor should know. Yeah. If they don't have it listed, ask. Because that pink is so cute. I know. And it's so sad because that's the one that usually has the most trouble going down. Oh, it was good. It behaved for me. Wow. Lucky. Yeah, that might be one that would be better suited to um, being stored in one of those gasket containers that I showed you guys earlier. 
so that it never fully dries out. Mm, that's a good thought. Because then it's easier to reactivate if you're working from that instead of it being 100% or not 100% not dried out, but you know what I mean. Okay. All right. So now we're on to the purple ones you said. Mm -hmm. Those are next in line. So what's different other than clove oil? Um, well, it depends on the pan. I, I oh, believe okay. most of those should be made with the Windsor Newton gum Arabic, but right. it really depends. Some of it's going to be my homemade binder. Some of it's just going to be whatever I was doing at the time. Deep dream. But mostly, mostly I wanted to share the latest pigments that I had my hands on and have you test them out. Because I figured if I was going to have my office covered in sparkles, uh -huh. you should too. Oh, yes. Actually, I don't think Joseph minds at all. <laughs> We've always appreciated handmade stuff. Yeah. And the fact that it's one of our friends making it makes it really cool. Yeah. And it's homemade stuff that you can use to make Secret more homemade bond. stuff. Ooh, very sparkly. That's like a flake glitter. Which one is that? Secret Bond. You can see it's uh, got yeah, a larger Yeah, that is. Um, Although my particles camera... And is not so nice. So that one is, or so Secret Bond is actually a purple to gold color shift. Mm. Um, when it, it, that one, you'll see the color shift best in the sunlight, quite honestly. Okay. Ooh, ooh that's a chameleon color right there. I have a nail polish <laughs> and that is this color. So it's probably using the same pigments. Because these are all commercial grade pigments. They're kind of like industry standard. For the cosmetic industry. Yeah. It, the thing is, is I can't find any vendor that will like refer to them by the same name mm -hmm. or the same color formulation. So they're all I've, probably buying them from the same vendor, but in order to make their products stand out, they are claiming proprietary because it's probably like the automotive industry where it's all coming from the same source. Yeah. And I would love to find that source. Oh, man, me and you both. It, well, if I do, I will That's tell you. blue eyes. And this, vi this stream isn't intended to put anybody who's already making and selling handmade watercolors out of business. That's not the goal. Yeah, I, I'm not selling anything. Um, and let me tell you, making Look your own that. homemade watercolors is an expensive adventure. Sure. So, you know, if you're thinking you're going to go in there and do better than yeah. some of the folks that are already doing it, maybe reconsider what you want to do and start smaller with making something that you personally would want to use. And then when your friends are like, I love that, you can slowly. Yeah, that's like my other big, this is crowd feather or crow feather, sorry. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. That's my other big complaint about a lot of people who are um, kind of coming in new to art as a commercial venture and they want it to be, they, they didn't necessarily start with like commissions or small merch. They want it to be their full-time money right now. And it's like a lot of artists have been doing it for a long time and it takes a long time to build up to that. Yes. And it's not a statement at all of someone else's ability or quality. It's just a statement of, it's a competitive it market. Time. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, it takes time. It takes time or a lot of luck and having connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, luck. Right place, right time. Mm -hmm. So, and that's going to be for any, any handmade kind of thing. Yes. And that's partly why I don't do art as a business. Um, yeah. But, but also I find it intensely frustrating to work on business as business. I'd rather, it, I, I prefer my computers. I get that. I, I really, <laughs> really, really get that. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, by day I fix, I fix servers. So. Royal pixie. But it also frees you up to do things like this mm -hmm. because this, is an expensive initial investment. Yeah, and I can do this as a hobby and then share my knowledge with others. 
And I'm not saying that is something that anybody else should do. Oh, right. goodness, but no. It, but it is, because that's something we kind of became friends over, was this, initially, was this uh, desire to make art more accessible to more people. Mm-hmm. And I kind of put myself out of business because a lot of the people I have taught or my resources have taught are getting jobs, and I have not. Yeah. So it's a, it's a gaslight. It's a mixed bag. Yeah, so Gaslight in particular is actually an automotive-grade pigment, and cool. you'll actually see that separate when you, swatch on, uh, when you swatch that on the white paper. Yeah, that would be my big request for you with these, is more heavy granulation or um, a mixing these kind of effects particles with, mm. like, Lunar Black or with um, some of the Daniel Smith stuff that granulates out. So that you get, so, like, multi-effect. Yeah, so I can probably pick up some of the Lunar Black um, or Lamp Black pigment in bulk and mix that with some of the chameleons. You actually see, uh, if you look at my part of the screen, sure. I've got let me, some let stuff me that I'm swatching. Oh, you don't have to switch there it. There we go. Ooh, those are pretty. Yeah, so these are actually three colors that, you know, I, rec I think... This one is Secret Bond. I forget what this one is. And this one is one that I called Apparition. Um, and these three, I just added black to as a base. Yeah. I didn't add a whole lot of black. Yeah, because you don't want it to overwhelm the sparkle, but you want, I think it adds like such a nice dimension to it. And then if you mm -hmm. work real wet into wet, you get a lot of that sedimentation out as well. So they could be really yes. nice for like effects washes. Yes. Oh, yes, this would be, like, perfect on a moon. So, yeah. I'm working kind of dry. <laughs> Don't mind me too much. I mean, the other thing is, you know, you've got all these art supply companies, and they're basic in the U.S. They're all distributed by, like, the same three parent companies. You've got FILA, you've got Cole Arts, and then you've got Newell Rubbermaid. And they all kind of just copy each other. Like something works for one, so they're all going to do it. And you just don't get as much innovation here in the U.S. or as much novelty in, in artist-grade stuff. You know, you, for hobby-grade stuff, you got a lot of weird stuff and a lot of innovation. And some of it's great and some of it's terrible. But if you're looking at, like, professional-grade stuff, there's not necessarily a lot of risks being taken. Yeah, well... So another thing that I did this summer is I experimented with resin. So I looked at resin pigments as a source for finding some of this stuff. So, it, you know, like I'm sitting here doing all this risk taking. It just because I'm like, I can't find this in what I want. Yeah. And that's where I think a lot of the, um, the benefit of being an artist who also, or someone who makes art, depending on how you want to think about yourself, and also makes these things, comes in because a lot of the innovation comes from, gee, I wish such and such existed. I'm going to go make it. Oh, yeah. Actually, I will get my sketchbook real quick because I can actually, I have used my paints. It's just across the table on the other side of the room. Oh, man. Um... So this is my little handmade sketchbook, but I use some of Let me switch. Hang my on. paints. Okay. Ooh. So. That looks so much better. I almost said so much better in person. It looks, your, your photo wasn't able to do it justice. Yeah. Like, for Those instance, this is, this is the hollow here for the stars in the back. Oh, nice. So, yeah. And what paper did you end up using in your, um sketchbook um this is just the um the stonehenge aqua cold press oh that's like your favorite we're gonna have to like bury you with some <laughs> yeah i know right so yeah um let's see Ooh, see this is what oh, yeah. i'm interested in because you get those larger flats and i know that's difficult to do with watercolor mediums you know um you don't see yeah. the large glitter 
flex that often. So if you want that kind of effect, you're kind of stuck buying all these like weird adhesives that have those flex in them and they might yellow over time. Like they kind of put me in mind of the Kuratake brush pins, the ones that would yellow after a while. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's really nice to have, man, please, please. I know it's like so not feasible, but please make like a large flat glitter. I have this, um, the snow glitter that has like these huge flecks in it. You probably know what I'm talking about. And I would love a watercolor with, <laughs> that's such a dorky thing to want. I mean, I can see what I can do. Or like yeah. uh, black flecks or even like confetti flecks. I mean, we're getting, oh, I like this a lot too with the larger particles. <laughs> How are you holding up? I know it's getting kind of late for you. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, if if we want to call it a night at the end of swatching, that's probably good. That would I'm work. I'm starting to get a little bit tired. Yeah. I still have to do my uh, not Inktober tonight. So. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't burn yourself out. Please oh, I'm already, I'm already done. I'm there already. I'm already done. Oh, Christ. no. But I only have one more for Coma page to ink, and then things kind of clear up for me. Oh, good. So it's just getting past that. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let us know. Uh, this whole video will be available to view after the stream. Um, it seems like we got some new friends in here. So these are handmade watercolors by Kabocha. Kabocha is the other voice and the other screen on the stream. I'm the one with the big paper right now. And Kabocha is the one swatching on the smaller screen yep hello and uh kabocha makes watercolor oh this is deception it's like totally different these are the same color y'all <laughs> totally <laughs> different um kabocha makes watercolors for fun so the point of the stream was to talk about the materials and the process and um things that kabocha's kind of learned along the way Yep. I'll put you on the spot. Is there any way you can kind of distill your knowledge into like a paragraph? Um, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> give me a second. Put you on the spot. So when you're making watercolors, I, I, if you want for accessibility's sake, strongly recommend using um, just Windsor Newton gum Arabic. If you want your paint to be a little squishier, Add, a, add just a little bit of honey. Do not add too much. Um, make sure that it is mixed together well. And choose a pigment that is finely milled. Um, unless Already you're going you. to, Yeah, unless you're going to be doing hand mulling, um, which you may still end up doing anyway. Um, you can use glass from the dollar store. You don't have to use one of those super expensive mulling sets. Um, you know, and if you're making paint, please, for your own health and safety, wear PPE, um, or that's personal protective equipment, like gloves, a mask, because you're going to be working with powders. Um, if you're buying genuine pigments, some of that might be toxic. Um, do not use it around pets. And if you're using clove oil, also don't use it around your pets. Don't get it. Don't let your cat eat it. Don't let your dog eat it. It will make them very sick. And I'm also going to have show notes in the description of this video after this stream has yes. ended. So if you need links to things, if you missed anything, you can check down there. So I'm going to go freshen up my cup of water because we're dealing with neons. And uh, are these neons oh. light fast? Those are glow in the dark. Oh, they're glow in the dark. So the, I mean, I thought they were neon, but so they're glow nope. in the dark. So they're they're fluorescent then. So are they light? <laughs> are they light fast? Um, you know, I haven't tested them for light fastness. Okay. Um, but those are resin pigments, so I imagine oh, that there is interesting. some light fastness. Yeah. But I haven't tested that. See, normally neons are not light fast because they're dye dye based, and dye based mm -hmm. colors tend to be more fugitive. And uh, generally, there's no way to make neons unless you have 
die. So I wasn't asking like to put you on the spot, but more yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I thought those were neat and I had just made those. So I thought you would enjoy. I'm really excited out. about these. I want to, this is kind of a spoiler. I want to plan a future stream project around these. All right, freshen up my cup. I'll be right back. All right. Um, the binder doesn't necessarily affect the light fastness. Um, it can affect how the paper reacts in the long term. For instance, if you're using, if you decide to use egg for your binder instead of gum arabic, you might find that that you know your paper really starts to yellow over time. Or glycerin, glycerin will yellow too. Um, actually, glycerin will yellow a lot, like after six months. I've tested that. It's pretty interesting. Also, Joseph, why are you on the ball with your questions tonight? All right, so Joseph Coco asks, if you're using something sensible, does the binder affect light fast? Now, when you say something sensible, you don't mean something like food pigments, right? Or like uh, clovers you picked in the yard and dried for <laughs> the green color. You mean like one of the one of the sellers we talked about today somebody who makes automotive pigments or makeup pigments or uh resin pigments right yeah uh actually i just answered that while you were oh, away dear. hang on <laughs> you're fine um the the long and short of it Kaboja, is that... did i lose you no i can't hear you anymore i'm uh -oh. so sorry let me try something else. Oh no. Hello? Hey, I can hear you. Oh dear. I know Coach is still there, but I can't hear her. So, um, what am I'm I going to go do is I am first going to put a little bit of water on these because they sure do seem like they need to be pre-activated. And what that does is it gives the gum arabic a chance to soak up some water and the pigments to kind of become a little bit looser and a little freer. And I'm gonna go grab my wonderful husband who, <laughs> I'm not using the wrong earbud, I'm using the correct earbud. <laughs> I don't know, I can like, I feel like I can very faintly hear. Meanwhile, I'm here ID10T laughing ID10T problems like seem to pop up for me. So, but y'all can still hear Kabocha, correct? So it's a it's a me problem, not a connection problem, and not a um any other sort of problem. <laughs> well then, <laughs> if y'all can hear me, Joseph Coco, come in here, please, or maybe did Kabocha step away? No, I am here. Oh, I can hear you so faintly. Oh, oh yeah, I I'm here. But we messed up the stream, I'm sure. Um, he is asleep over on another chair being a very, very good boy. So No, it was how I will fiddle with this. I like how I went to empty the water and that's when my headset was <laughs> like, I'm not gonna work anymore. It's fine. I even Meanwhile, tried turning them. I'm being attacked by a kitten. Laughing at me. Yeah, I, d I just put it on the floor and they're not working. I plugged, unplugged it and I plugged it back in. You ran the line to be sure. No, I was very gentle though when I put it down and when I picked it up. Oops. I was just untangling them from the thing. All right, well, I'm going to fly blind for a moment here. Sorry if I'm <laughs> talking over you, Kabocha. I'm going to start swatching the fluorescent colors. So the way these are gonna work, huh? Well, people think you're a, a phantom anyway. The way these are gonna work is they are gonna fluoresce under say a black light or they, they glow in the dark, right? So if I turned off all the lights, what was that? They would glow. 
Um, and I'm not going to do that in this stream because I, I feel like I have to like adjust my camera appropriately to get them to work. So they show up a little bit on the white watercolor paper. You could probably use the, the lightest, the, the white color basically, the white pigment to do like secret messages or like secret art. Which would be, that's a whole nother cool idea right there. Secret art on top of existing art. They do show up as a faint neon on the paper. I'm gonna play some music just so I can see. Okay, fair warning. Uh, Joseph's gonna play a little bit of music just so we can see if the headphones are even working. Okay, so that's the neon colors. I was so proud of this stream. I'm still so proud of this stream. This was a good one. <laughs> and it was really very delightful to have a guest. I can be a guest more often if you want. I know she couldn't hear me. I'll just reiterate the offer later. Now this one doesn't want to come back up. Okay, here we go. Not to my Picking knowledge. It up. Yeah, this one needs to be pre-activated pretty heavily. But that's good to know. The uh, very Someone light. is laughing at my at my expense. I was cackling just a little bit, only a little. Okay, then finally, we have the glitter. Or it says with glitter. Okay, oh. oh, are these fluorescent with glitter? I see that we have some... Uh, Oh, gradation going on. I mean, for the end of the stream, we can just have. They're glow in the dark with glow in the dark glitter. Ooh. Ooh. Becca requested glitter. that specifically. Or even like some normal paints with glow in the dark. Glow in the dark. Glow in the dark glitter would be really cool too. Like, there's so many neat specialty effects that have like a market of three people. I mean, that's why I made stuff on stream. So people can learn how simple it can be if you don't get too fancy. Huh, it works? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I am so lucky to have such a handsome technical support in-house. Thank you, you're the best. Oh. Everybody Glow clap for Joseph the Phantom. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. I was wondering what, when you, things would go pear-shaped. Are you are you able to hear me now? Yes. Oh, ex uh, well, darn, I can't just sit here and cackle. Laugh at my expense. No, I was just cackling because uh -huh. I can. Yeah, sure. I mean, why not? So I'm a little bit disappointed in the white glow-in-the-dark paint because uh, it glows blue. Well, sure, yeah. Um, but it also doesn't reactivate as well. So oh. that probably means I needed to add more pigment for the amount of gum arabic. But then you would so. lose... I mean, it, it is it just show up a little bit. Um, I think I yes. don't think I swatched it on the white. So let me swatch it on the white. But what could be cool for this is it could basically be like secret message paint, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean? So you could do like a really cool. So, okay, it like barely shows up on the white. So it could be useful for that. Yeah. These are so cool. Now, I'm not yeah, getting any of the like glitter, it. though, in these. I don't know if Th it's... those were Those were really an experiment. Yeah. Because you were like, can we do it with glitter? Because I was like, I have glow-in-the-dark <laughs> glitter, too. So I gave it a shot. I don't know that it worked. That's okay. And see, that's another reason, like, doing it just for funsies, you know? You're not 
it's not like you've like created this product that doesn't work that's not going to sell you experimented and it didn't work quite as well but you're out two pants or however many you ended up making yeah in the uh in the eternally wise words of the nugget bridge trainers i did my best i have no regrets no regrets <laughs> Okay, so we have swatched a whole bunch of paints tonight. We talked about the process of making paints yourself and when that might be feasible or when that might not be feasible. Um, what, are, what are your next plans? Do you wanna talk about the other thing I have on the table or is that another stream or just nah? Uh, which one was the other thing? I've forgotten already. I don't wanna show it because if you don't oh. wanna talk about it, I don't wanna do it. Oh, yeah. Let's save it for another night. Uh, it, I have to admit. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm getting tired. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hey. same. Th you oh, charged hey, it. Some of the glow. Ooh, neat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the places that I bought pigment from actually had this little light that came with it. So it's basically a little black light, but it also works excellently for charging these up. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. If you guys have any final questions, now is the time to do it because we're about to call it a night. It's been a, a wonderful two hour stream. I really like this stream. Thank you so much for being my guest and being so generous with your knowledge and your time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And ah, thank you all. for, thank you for asking all sorts of questions I actually hadn't considered in this because I like sharing this knowledge. I know like once you've been doing something for a really long time, it's hard to kind of remember the basics. Yeah. Well, anytime you want to be a guest again, you're welcome to. It's nice having somebody else do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, Thank you guys. I hope, yeah, I want to stream together again. And we used Discord as our pass between, and it was actually easier than I thought it would be. I was yeah. thinking we were going to have like all these weird hiccups because that's been the story of, and we did do a <laughs> test the other day, to be fair. But just because we do a test doesn't mean the stream ever goes the way the test goes. So no. we, we were lucky. Yeah, but I mean, overall, this has been an excellent experience, and I appreciate your audience. And Joseph asked some fantastic questions. He's, yeah, he's good at that. You would, you would think he was a, a full-time artist. He tricks, not on purpose, but he tricks other artists. They always think he's the artist <laughs> in the relationship. <laughs> oh, dear. But we know, we've seen his drawing abilities on stream. I liked his drawing of Happy, all right? Like, it captured it Happy's great. essence, which is what I think being an artist is all about. So, Junior yeah. M asked if you would make these on a special order. Um, not necessarily. Um, it, it's one of those things, um... That's actually a good question. If you are in the paint box, send me a DM and I can send you a list of what I've got. But I'm not in a position where I can do special orders for yeah. specific pigments at the moment. Yeah, because you're still, this is this is still for fun for you. Well, yeah, that and we're also going through layoffs and furloughs at work. So yeah. I'm trying to save up right now. <laughs> so, um buying random things off of Etsy to test is not in my, uh, it is not in my current budget at the moment. Oh yeah. That's totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. This would not be the, the fallback job making watercolor yeah. plates. Yeah. No, I, I much prefer to, uh, put my technical expertise to, to use so if you need if you have questions about configuring apache as part of a lamp stack you know i might be able to help you out i told you for years you should charge art comic artists to set up their sites <laughs> i know like your least favorite thing <laughs> other least favorite thing <laughs> stuff of nightmares but, but all righty all right y'all y'all were fantastic thank you so much for your questions thank you so much for your patience and thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening 
Um, I have no idea what next week what next week is going to bring, but I was kind of thinking we might paint some pumpkins together. What do you guys think about that? Does that sound yes. like fun? Yeah. I got some foam ones at uh, Michael's because last year I painted pumpkins on stream and they turned out really cute and then they rotted. So these are going to be never rot pumpkins. So I think next week might be a good time to do that. 